Hey everybody, it's Nick Dolman here again, and I just want to point out some stuff I learned this week on business process flows. Now, I was working on a project uh, similar to this, but uh, we wanted to add a business process flow to an application process. In my particular customer, they you know put in the application on a Power Apps portal, which created a record in Dataverse, and I have a model-driven app where I'm managing that whole process. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of business process flows, but in this particular case, I think it would work well for the staff to be able to go through this. They have the application in here. There's different steps verifying the date, and then they have to verify the account and maybe see if it already exists in the lookup. Now, if it doesn't exist in the lookup, I wanted a process where they could create that account without having to navigate to a different thing in, um, within the model-driven app. Um, I could have done a quick create form, but here I just thought it would be cool. Now, there's something in business process flows that has been around for a while is the ability to run a workflow. So let's take a quick look to see how we would set that up. So I'm in the business process flow editor here, and I'm going through my different steps. And here we have our steps here. What I can do is I can create this action step. And I'm just going to drag that in. Let's just do that under here. And then with this action step, I need to pick a process. Now I can create a brand new workflow here, but I have one I created earlier. And it's just a very simple um, classic workflow. And we could, or we could go in and create a brand new one. So I'm here in the, in the classic workflow editor. I've, it's triggering as an on-demand process. And it's basically, I'm creating an account based on the information that was in my application. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna update the uh, lookup with that particular account. Very simple, classic workflow. It is running synchronously. That's something we can't do in Power Automate is run this uh, not in the background, but synchronously. So that's why I chose a workflow in this particular case. So back here in my business process flow editor, I'm going to choose an action step. So there was that workflow I created. I'll just give it a name, call this create account. Of course, we have to hit that apply button, something I seem to forget a lot of sometimes. We've done that. So this is great. So we've we've now are able to update our business process flow. And I'm in my steps. I'm going to go create account. And here I'm just going to execute that. And that's processing that workflow. And you'll saw that after a few seconds, it was completed. I have the little green check mark and I can continue on to the next stage if it's um, if there's not other fields required in the way I go in my business process flow. Now workflows are great, but of course we want to take a look at Power Automate because with Power Automate, there's a lot more things I could do. I could create child records. I could update other information. Or I could even integrate to other systems. So I'm going to go here to this particular step and we have this flow step. Now it is in preview, but what we can do on our components is we can drag over and create a flow preview step. And from there, we'd have to link that to a particular flow. Now I've created a flow earlier, but what we would want to do here is let's just take a look at how we would create that specific flow that we would use within our business process flow. So I'm going to create this within my solution. Of course, I'm going to hit new. Let's choose a new flow. There's a lot of things in that menu. And that's going to launch Power Automate um, directly within my environment. So we're going to need to choose a trigger. So I'm going to choose the common data service. Um, it has not yet been renamed to Dataverse, but I am going to choose when a flow step is executed. So that's the trigger that we want. So we have that when flow step is executed. That's great. We could add some inputs if we wanted. I don't really want any inputs right now. So as I'm going through this, like in a workflow, because we're triggering on a specific entity, we know the record we're working on. But in this case, we're going to have to retrieve the record. So normally what we do is we just go in with the common data service and uh, get a record. And we choose to get a record. And here I actually want to find that application record I created. I think it was competition, applications. Now we have to determine the globally unique identifier, and that's the identifier for the particular record. So we're able to get that. So immediately as I did that, I am into my dynamic content. And then from here, we see when the flow step is executed, being from the trigger, we have a whole bunch of options. So I can go and find the particular um, ent entity record ID. I'm gonna choose that, and that's gonna retrieve that the actual record from where I launched my flow from my business process flow. So we've done that. 
And then I can go through my next step and create a bunch of things. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new record in the common data service. Fill that in with some name and I can fill in some more information as I need it from that particular record. Of course, I could do a whole bunch of different things here. I could go through a loop, I could talk to other systems, but that's it. So we want to, we have our flow created and that'd be pretty cool. So we're going to give this a name. So back in, back in my flow step, I've done the same. I dragged over that into my um, stage there. And here I'm configuring this in the properties window. I'm going to create the meet. I'm going to now choose my flow and you'll see the flows have been created with that particular trigger, create the powerlifting meet, apply that and update my business process flow. And we're going to be able to check that out. So now I'm in the stage here, I can run my flow. And of course, this is going to ask me a few other questions about running the flow. Talk about using that connection. That's okay. Let's run that flow. And then flow successfully started to monitor it. We can look at the flow runs page. So let's just pop over and take a look at our flow runs. So we're back here in our flow run, our run history. It ran 22 seconds ago. It didn't take long, took less than a minute. And we have status of succeeded. Great, so we can continue on with our business process flow. So I'm here and I'm trying to go to my next stage, but I'm getting a little explanation point. It's still processing. This flow is still processing. I can't move to the next stage. So there's something definitely missing here. And how can we be able to make sure that flow is complete? It's an asynchronous process. We saw that it did run successfully, but there's one thing that's a step that we need to add that it's not very well documented is the ability to update our business process flow with the status that this has completed properly. So let's take a look at that. So remember what we, you know, everything is stored in the Dataverse. So let's just add a new step and we're gonna update our record this time. So I'm gonna choose the common data service. We're going to update a record here as our action. The entity name. Now this is something that it's hard to find in the documentation. So we'll hope you find it here. We're going to be looking for the process logs and the process logs table is what is actually storing information about our business process flow that's in progress. Now we're also going to have to identify the item ID. And now the item ID is our um, the flows workflow log ID. So let's locate that or we can just do a search. And here it is, kink flows, workflow, log ID. I'm gonna choose that. And now we can set the status of that particular step in our stage. So here we can choose canceled, failed, in progress, succeeded, waiting. We want this to be succeeded. So we've set that. Again, I'm just gonna save my flow here, saving that step. And now let's go back to our business process flow and see how this works out. So now I'm in here in the finalize. And if I were to run that flow, again, it's going to prompt me. And this time I'm just going to hit done. And one thing I have noticed is we are going to have to refresh our particular page and I'm just going to refresh the page and let's go back here. This time we now see that we have the grill green check mark. We have succeeded and we can move on to the next stage in our business process flow. So anyways, it's uh, it's not all that intuitive, but it's a little tip that I hope you'll help you help you out. And by using flows and workflows and business process flows definitely makes it a lot more powerful, a lot more usable. And I think your end users are really going to appreciate the process and the work you put in. Thanks a lot. So for more training ideas and for more training courses, please check out 365.training. Have a great day.